G'day everyone, here you go, and welcome to another episode of my travel vlog, and welcome to the Pilbara. Right now, we are over in Karajini National Park, but I don't want to muck around too much with an introduction. This is what you've got in store for this episode, and let's get right into it, guys. What's going to happen on this road? Welcome to the Pilbara. This is a place I wasn't even going to come to and within half a day of being here, it is already one of my favourite places in Australia. Not just on this trip, I reckon this is one of my favourite places I've ever been to. This place is unbelievable. Right now I am at Circular Gorge which is right behind me and I've got a campsite booked at Dale's Campground which is just up the road here. Basically how I ended up here was I had a photo shoot last night over at Onslow and, and with two or three days to fill in before I have my next photo shoot over at Caratha, I thought what can I do to fill in a bit of time? I know what I'll do. I'll drive six hours inland and then I'll go and check out Karajini National Park and then I'll head north up to Karatha again. So I've headed across the Tom Price today and I've uh, honestly, one of the best drives I reckon I've ever done. The Flinders Ranges was beautiful driving through there, but the drive across uh, from Tom Price out here to Karajini National Park was just something else. It was beautiful. It was just epic. Not to mention I almost hit a jogger on the way out of uh, Parabadu. <laughs> who nearly ran in front of a car. Spirited Traveller. The Australian government would like to remind you that now... Now the sun is going down, guys, and I'm just about to go and set up camp. But before we do, I just want to show you a bit of a highlights reel of my day over here at the National Park so far. Pilbara and I'm absolutely loving this place. Uh, so last night I camped over at Dale's campground and that was a really bloody good campsite. If you're coming out to Karajani for a look, I highly recommend that you go out and camp at night at Dale's campground. But make sure you book uh, in advance if you can because I was only able to get one night out there. Now you might notice that right now <laughs> uh, there's a few corrugations on the road. I'm heading out to Hancock Gorge. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's, the road's a bit worse than I thought it was going to be, but it's all good. It's good practice for when I get on the gib, having a few corrugations like this. <laughs> but last night's campground was really good. So if, you, if you're coming out to carry Jenny, make sure you stay at Dale's campground. I've never in my life seen a sunset as good as what I saw last night. Not even an exaggeration. It was unbelievable. And I know I say that about a lot of things, but that sunset was incredible. And um, also, the night sky. I have never seen a night sky that clear in all my life. So, bloody, if you're coming to Northern WA, come out here to the Pilbara, come to Karajani, and come and do this, because this is incredible. Now, Hancock Gorge is on the agenda for this afternoon. <laughs> and uh, this morning, I went and had a look around Hammersley Gorge, which was also really good. And... Um, definitely worth a look but there was a few people out there and it only got busier after I left so I'm just going to show you guys what I've been up to today and then we're going to head out here to Hancock Gorge and I'm going to show you a bit of that too so enjoy guys
going on first, Johnny? I wasn't even going to swim. I thought I'll just go for a bit of a look at the bottom. I cannot believe what I've uncovered here. This is unbelievable. Oh my goodness. Get to WA right now, everybody, and come to Carriage Inn. Forget how good the lookouts are, guys. Coming for a swim and walking through these gorges are next level. Honestly, I don't think I'd be exaggerating if I said that was one of the best experiences of my life. <laughs> and I think it's because I didn't know it was there. I had no expectations. And to find something that good when I didn't even know it was there, wow, Carrigeni. One of, if not the most favorite place I now have in Australia. G'day everyone. I'm just parked up here on the side of the road leaving Tom Price. Bit of a sad day, to be honest. I really bloody enjoy carriage, Annie. What a spot. Anyway, I, I was hoping to do a bit more filming in the gorge yesterday, um, but as it turned out, the, the GoPro was playing funny buggers with me. And um, I just want to say that I, I got to that gorge at the end, which was called Kermit's Pool, and it's at, it's at Hancock's Gorge. So you walk down the gorge, and then I thought, oh, I'll just have a bit of a wander down here. I won't go right to the end. But the more I walked in, the better it got. So if you do come to carriage, Annie, that is a must do. You have got to go to Hancock Gorge and go all the way through the Kermit's Pool. You've got to swim to get there. It is just epic. Um, so yeah, make sure you do it. It's, it's a 10 out of 10 must do. Even if you're just in Exmouth or Caratha or Port Hedland, come this way to do it. It is, Karajani's insane. Anyway, so right now I'm on the beginning of the Rio Tinto Rail Access Road. Now this is the quickest way to get to Caratha and I've got a photo shoot here uh, tonight. So I thought, well, this is gonna be the way I'm going. Now this road can apparently be absolutely disgraceful at times and I wasn't gonna come this way. Only that the lady at the visitor's center the other day said to me, this road's good now. It's the best it's been in four years. Um, I drove it the other day. So she put my mind the complete days and I thought, awesome, I'm going this way. But I was at the pub last night and I was chatting to one of the guys who works like in the mines out here. And I said to him, oh, do you know what the rail access road is like at the moment? And he's like, oh, you're going to run the gauntlet, are you? And I thought, oh no, <laughs> what's going to happen on this road? <laughs> and then also the other thing that worries me a little bit was to get a permit to, uh, to drive on this road, you had to watch a video on how to drive on dirt roads. So that, <laughs> which you might seem ridiculous and it did at the time, but if the road is just that bad that you literally have to watch a video on how to drive on it, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be in for. So this could be a complete like worry over nothing, but we're going to go on on this road. It's the quickest way to get to Carratha, apparently. So we're going to go up this road and uh, we're going to see what we're in for. It could be a really bloody good drive. Who knows? So let's go on this road. Let's get over to Carratha and let's go and check out what is going and happening over there, guys. Well, I kid you not, I've driven I don't even reckon it'd be a hundred meters. And this is what I've got coming towards me. Brace yourself, we're in for a dust cloud. <laughs> Good vision. <laughs> oh man, I hope I don't come across too many of these on this road. It'll be a slow trip if we do. <laughs> well, we made it across to Dampier. And uh, I've got to say, that access road was fine. <laughs> Apparently it turns to crap, but that was like one of the best dirt roads I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> Here I am worried it's gonna be absolutely terrible and it's gonna rip me car to bits and pieces. But anyway, it was fine. In fact, it was actually a really good drive. The dirt portion of the road was where all the action was at. There was bloody awesome mountain ranges in the background and there was Great big long trains and everything there. It was really bloody cool, actually. It was a good drive. If you're actually going from Caratha to Tom Price or vice versa, go out if you wanted to go on that road. It was really good. Unless it's been wet, it would be a terrible road to be on if the if the road and if the conditions were bad. <laughs> but for now, we've just pulled up in Dampier and we are over at the uh, Red Dog statue. And as you can see, there's a family over there getting uh, getting a video with the uh, getting a photo with old Red Dog. So. I'm, uh, I'm going to go and get a photo with Red Dog too. You can't come to Dampier and not get a photo with Red Dog. It's about the only thing here. 
So photo shoot tonight, and then uh, we're going to do a bit of exploring around the Carafa Dampier area over the next few days. So, so let's get into that. <laughs> G'day everyone, how you going? I've just uh, pulled up to the Pilbara Bakehouse here in Carafa, and it's lunchtime. So you know what that means? High o'clock. <laughs> so. Um, I drove past this bakery the other day and I thought, ooh, this looks alright. So, I've um, finally come in and I've got myself a pie for lunch. Now, today I've gone a little bit gourmet. We've gone the kangaroo dark ale pie. Um, so I went in there and uh, there was a lot of signs on the wall saying they'd been medalists and runners up and they won all those awards for their um for their pies over the years so i've got high expectations for this pie so here it is that's the uh that's pie pretty thin um nothing to get excited about right now um so we'll give it a go first kangaroo pie i've ever had yeah yeah, that's alright. Nothing to rave about. Just tastes like beef. Probably is. Probably I'm probably just eating a cow. Can hardly taste the ale at all. Yeah. I don't know about this. It's not disgusting, but it's nothing to rave about. Be disappointed to be honest. Right, well, that's ruined my day. Right, let's go find our campsite. G'day everyone, we are officially today, I'm pretty sure, six weeks into the trip and I've uh, officially set up camp for the night and I've got a roast on. Now, I've uh, got a, a campsite here at Cleve, Cleaverville, I think it's called, which is just north of Caratha. Good spot, I'm just going to show you uh, what my view looks like. Look at that, not too bad. <laughs> campsites here were it was $32 for two nights so I don't know if the price has changed varying on how many nights you book but 32 divided by two is 16 bucks a night <laughs> now I've got a couple of days to fill in um, before my next photo shoot on Wednesday today's Monday so I thought right I'm just gonna go fishing pretty much until Wednesday so I've got a couple of lures in Carafa today spent 50 bucks on two lures and I threw threw the rod in three casts later the line broke lost the first lure and then cast the uh, second lure out maybe half a dozen times and then I realised that, oh bugger, my line's tangled. So as I was untangling the line, I didn't realise, but the second lure got snagged on a rock and then I couldn't get it out and then it fell off and then it's in the bloody water there somewhere and I lost it. So then I saw it searched through the tackle box to, find if, to see if I had any more lures, had one more, threw it in. Went to reel it in after the cast and it just got snagged immediately. So lost three lures in the space of about 25 minutes. So fishing is going really good. But uh, that's, our, that's the setup for tonight and uh, we'll touch base with you guys when uh, we've got a bit more going on. Righto guys, just over here today over at Port Sampson and uh, I've just come across a guy playing the guitar. I've just had a yarn with him, he's an Italian fella, cracking bloke. So I said to him, I've got a guitar at my car, let's, let's have a jam. So it's about time he learned some classics, I reckon. I'll teach you a, a real Australian song if you like. It's, it's, this is our national anthem. It goes a bit like this. So it's G, E minor, C, Yeah, see? See. So... Been around the world a couple of times or maybe more. I've seen the sights, I've had the lights on every foreign shore. But when my mates all ask me the place that I adore, I tell them right away. What do we tell them? Give me a home among the gum trees Where lots of plum trees <laughs> A ship or two and a kangaroo And a clothesline at the back Miranda at the front And an old rocking chair <laughs> <laughs> I never had this 
Oh, that's our national anthem. <laughs> yeah. And then you got to do your best uh, kookaburra impression. You go... <laughs> 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 and just do that. This is so good. With, this, with the laughing. Sorry? The songs that keep going with the laughing. With the yeah, 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 basically, yeah. And then it does that, and then it just goes back into the chorus. Give me a home among the gum trees. Where lots of gum trees. I'll teach you another um, good Australian song. Mm -hmm. This is by the late great Slim Dusty. Yeah, it's about truck driving. Mm -hmm. So it goes, Well, it's a long straight road and the engine is deep. I can't help thinking of a good night's sleep and the long, long roads of my life are calling me. G'day. Well, that was a pretty good little jam session. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So I'm just going to cook myself some lunch now. I've got me a... Uh, roast beef uh, leftovers from last night on me 12 volt little uh, jaffle maker here so that's going to be lunch and um, I'm going to head back out to Cleaverville uh, for another night's camping out there now uh, there's, I'm running out of things to do around this craft area but that Cleaverville area is actually really nice I got the drone up there yesterday and had a bit of a fly over the campsites and the boat ramp area it's a really good spot you can see all the inlets coming in from the ocean there and the it looks incredible from the air, so uh, we're going to head back over there for another night and we're going to set up camp there again tonight. And then we've got another couple of days in Carafa and then we're going to head over the broom. So we might throw the fishing rod in again and uh, see if we can catch ourselves a fish this time. And then uh, if not, we'll be touching base again over when we get to broom. So we'll see you guys a bit later on. Guys, guys, we finally made it to broom. There we have it. Oh man, it's been a hectic 24 hours and we'll get into that shortly. But I've just driven like eight hours to get here. My goodness gracious me, we are gonna go and have a beer on Cable Beach before the sun goes down tonight. Right oh, so I've checked into the Cable Beach Caravan Park. This joint is enormous. It would nearly need its own postcode, I reckon. And they are everyone here is crammed in. So I was nearly gonna stay another night here. I was gonna do tonight. But it's 50 bucks and I thought I just want to get somewhere tonight near Cable Beach so I can just sit down for a while and have a spell. But far out for 50 bucks and for a, uh, uh, for a caravan park that's this busy, there is no way. It's like living in the middle of Delhi here. So it took me about three minutes to decide, but I'm out of here tomorrow. Uh, so, all right, let's go, guys, and let's go and check out Cable Beach. One of Australia's most famous beaches. I'm keen to go and check this beach out for myself. Let's get over there, guys. So we've made it here to Cable Beach and I can see what all the fuss is about. This is pretty good. This is actually probably one of my favourite beaches so far, I reckon. And to celebrate, we're going to have ourselves a beer. Oh, sorry. Did I no, no, you're alright. All good, mate. No, no, no dramas. The camels are that way? Oh, yeah. Yep. Are they? Oh, I've got no idea. Oh, right. I, I knew they'd be here somewhere, but I'm not sure where they yeah, are. I don't know if they come down this far. Yeah, I'm, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I'm right. not sure. Sorry. That's Sorry, right. I can't be more out there. No so, just a bit of a summary from the last 24 hours. Went to a photo shoot over at Damp here yesterday. Photo shoot went well. That was good. No dramas at all. Except for the fact that about half an hour before I got there, I lost my bloody wallet. Yeah, there was no cash in it, thank goodness, but there was my bank card and my license in it, so... Oh, I've been spending all day today, driving eight hours, ringing up people, trying to sort all that out, so... Anyway, got a new license coming, I have to try and sort out my bank card and... One bloody thing after another. Anyway, let's enjoy this sunrise from here. G'day everyone, it's bedtime in the uh, Cable Beach Caravan Park and uh, just a couple of things I'd like to let you all know. Um, first of all, this is the busiest place on planet Earth. It's 9 o'clock right now and it's only probably been in the last 15 minutes that the cars have stopped rolling into this place. It is like, it's literally like living in Bombay or Delhi or something, this place is flat out. 
I'm waiting for one of them trains to go through with everyone hanging off the sides, but I swear it's just like that. And it's also a million degrees, so it is just like India. I've got me 12 volt fan going tonight, and um, I can tell you what, I'm gonna need it. I've got these backpackers next door, me, door to me who are English, and they're gonna work at 5 a.m., so I can't wait for them to wake me up at five o'clock, and they're also like two meters away from me, so. Um, I can't wait to hear them go to work in the morning, but they haven't got any fans. I asked them before and they just said, no, nah, we just sweat all night. So good luck to those bikes. But uh, anyway, I know one thing, I'll be out of here first thing in the morning and I won't be coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Wish me luck trying to sleep in this sauna tonight. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Welcome to Town Beach Broom. And I've just arrived here and this is gonna be my office for a while. I'm just editing some photos here from yesterday's photo shoot uh, over in Caratha. So I'm just setting up a shop here for uh, probably an hour or two. And then we're gonna go and check out uh, all the sites that Broom has on offer. But I thought this would make a pretty good backdrop to edit some photos too. So I also noticed on this sign here, we are back in jellyfish and crocodile country. So. Uh, you can swim in the beaches here, but at your own risk. So I don't think I'm going to worry about it right now, but uh, you can swim in the beaches if, if you want to die. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the caravan park last night was flat out. I could just hear bloody cars and motorbikes all night. It was like the busiest bloody caravan park ever. So uh, we're going to find somewhere to camp at some stage today. We're going to go and check out Broom, and uh, then we're going to go and do a bit of grocery shopping and start preparing for the Gibb River Road, which I'm heading off to on Monday. We've got a couple of days here in Broome, then we're off to Derby, and then we're gonna go and start the Gibb. So, let's get some photos edited. All right, the shopping trip has begun, and it, it, it started with some uh, fuses, because for some bloody reason, I've got this warning coming up, and I've got to keep replacing the fuse. Um, some break override thing, so I just had to do it for the first time in the week. I actually forgot all about it, and then it came up again, I was like, oh crap. So I had to replace a fuse and then I've just got some more because when I get on the gib, I just got this feeling I'm just gonna, I don't know, it's gonna happen all the time. I just got this bad feeling about the gib. But anyway, uh, that's stop number one, that's stop number one on the uh, on the agenda. Yeah, we're gonna go get some food and we've got to work out how I'm gonna get some grog because I haven't got a license anymore because I lost my wallet. So I'm gonna have to try and work out how I'm gonna try and get grog when you need a license to prove that you're not on the banned drinkers list up here in the Kimberley. So. Uh, that's the next uh, thing to work out, so wish me luck. <laughs> Righto guys, so I've arrived here at uh, Cable Beach, just doing a little bit more work here on the uh, laptop. Been shopping and uh, finally got some supplies to uh, get ready for this Gibb River road trip. But uh, I just lifted my head up from, uh, from my laptop for two seconds and I just thought this was a bit of an interesting sight coming towards me. Not every day you're uh, sitting here in the car park and about a dozen camels start coming up the road towards it. <laughs> we might have to hang around for the camel show tonight, I reckon. Cheers to another night in Broome, guys. Thought I'd come to the other side of uh, Cable Beach today, and um, the reason being I've tracked down Burke and Wills and their expedition. There they are over there, off to the Gulf of Carpentaria. And yeah, we're just going to watch this uh, sun go down again. Not a bad view. I'm bloody going to miss this view when I leave WA. left uh, Cable Beach and I'm just going to give you a rundown of my shopping trip I did today for the Gibb River Road. So we've loaded up on bananas. Now since I left home I have been living on these things. These have been breakfast and lunch and a banana combined with a muesli bar is a bloody good breakfast let me tell you. And it's cheap and it's, uh, it's easy. So that's pretty much what I've been living on and that's what we're going to be living on on the Gibb River Road. So that's uh, breakfast or maybe some days lunch uh, covered. Now, we've also got ourselves some bread. Nothing uh, too exciting about that. We've already got some potatoes, so nothing too exciting to report there. The other thing I've been living on since I left home is white Tim Tams. My goodness gracious me. A couple of these for dessert every night. They are addictive. Not hard to eat the whole packet in one go if you don't stop yourself. If you haven't had these yet, get onto them. Uh, a little bit more of a snack. Gippsland Dairy Yogurt. Also uh, love this stuff. This is a new one out. Lemon curd twist. Make sure if you haven't had uh, this yet, limited edition, go and get yourself some Gippsland Dairy Yogurt. 
Now, not food, but one other thing that has bloody been a saviour on this trip for me, baby wipes, or in this case today, dead old wipes. My goodness gracious me. I have powered through those things. They are a lifesaver. For dishes or any other wiping needs, uh, they are the go, let me just tell you. Now, uh, this is not very exciting, but I just couldn't believe the size of this thing. Is that Australia's biggest lettuce? I'm not even joking, like, this is the biggest lettuce I've ever seen. I reckon I could survive on this lettuce alone on the Gibb River Road for like a week, just just baiting these, these lettuce leaves. This will be good. I'll be able to get a few lunches out of this with some sandwiches and uh, I'm gonna make tacos one night, I reckon, so this is gonna come in handy. Last but not least is the meat and the beer. I haven't got my meat uh, just yet. Meat is tomorrow's job, and I've still got to work out how I'm going to get the beers without a license. Um, but that's basically my uh, sides and desserts and uh, snacks for the uh, for the Give River Road, which you'll be seeing on the next episode. G'day everyone. I don't know where I'm staying tonight. I booked a site at this bloody bird observatory place, and Google Maps is like giving me one way to go there and the road I'm going down is obviously not the right road and there's no alternative route Google Maps has given me so I'm buggered if I know where the hell I'm gonna stay tonight my goodness gracious me <laughs> oh far out <sighs> great <laughs> 7 14 at night how the hell am I gonna find a place tonight oh my goodness that was an extra 45 minutes I didn't need on my trip. Anyway, we pulled up here at the uh, Bird Observatory and we're gonna go and check out where this campsite is. Oh man, it's only early, but I could go to bed now already. I did not need that to finish the day. <laughs> well, it's times like these, you gotta be glad that you don't have to pull up and cook, cook any dinner. I picked a good night to order a pizza. And as it turns out, I was supposed to let me know on the phone not to go down that road. I just spoke to the caretaker of this bloody campground. Oh, didn't they tell you not to go down that road? No, don't follow Google Maps. Bloody hell. No, well, well, it's not my fault I got lost this time. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Well, it's morning for another nine minutes, but I'm just here at the front of the Roebuck Hotel, iconic broom pub, apparently. Called in here last night for a quick beer before I um, got my pizza. So, so just a bit of extra information on what actually happened last night. I was trying to find this bird observatory campground, which is about half an hour out of town, and Google Maps took me the wrong way. Eventually, I found the uh, address on Google when I came back into service after Google Maps took me the wrong way, and I tracked down like after about an hour of searching around for it. So, I've actually booked in um, a site again for tonight because, as it turns out, in the daylight, it's a really nice spot. So today I'm going to go get some meat for uh, the Gibb River Road, a um, bit more grocery shopping. But the reason I parked at the front of this Roebuck pub is because I'm going to go in and ask if there's someone there who can go and buy me some grog. I feel like an underage kid, like, asking an older guy if he can get some grog for me and my friends because I literally, I, I can't buy alcohol here without my license and because I don't have it, well, I've got to get someone else to get it for me. So I'm literally going to go into this pub and try and make friends with someone and see if they can buy me a couple of boxes of beer. <laughs> Anyway, after that, guys, we are going to head to this bird observatory. So I'm just going to finish up this episode, guys, with some drone footage over the uh, campground where I'm staying tonight. Beautiful spots. And the next time I'll chat to you guys is going to be over on the Gib. So have a great time, guys and girls, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers. Mm -hmm.